Ben Bernanke this week defending his bond buying program, saying he sees no sign that the stock market is in a bubble. Peter Schiff is here to tell us what he thinks of that. He's CEO of Euro Pacific Precious Metals. Peter, Bernanke says there are no bubbles in the stock market. Do you agree? Well, you know, remember Ben Bernanke or the Fed in general has a very poor history of detecting bubbles. In fact, Ben Bernanke himself said there was no real estate bubble even after the real estate bubble burst. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I don't think that there's necessarily a bubble in the stock market. There's certainly a bubble in certain types of stocks that are way overvalued as a result of all the cheap money uh, that Ben Bernanke has been creating. Going back to ahead of 2008, you were one that accurately was warning about a housing crisis when Ben Bernanke was saying that has never happened nationwide that we've seen prices plummet. So one of the other areas where you've been critical of Bernanke is when it comes to the U.S. dollar and you've been talking about a dollar collapse for years. Is that still part of your forecast? Well, absolutely. I mean, the dollar is going to collapse if Ben Bernanke doesn't reverse course. And of course, if he does, the whole phony economy that has been built on the foundation of stimulus is going to collapse as well. See, Ben Bernanke believes that somehow he can withdraw the stimulus mm -hmm. and the economy will keep on expanding. It's impossible because we have an economy that's of stimulus, by stimulus, and for stimulus. The only reason that we're, we're able to spend more money is because the Fed is creating it. The only reason that people are buying houses is because the Fed is buying up all the mortgages. So interest rates are artificially low. In fact, the government is a much bigger part of the housing market today mm -hmm. than it was in 2003, 4, and 5. And so we saw how much damage the government did last time. It's doing even more damage to the economy now. Right. But the thing that confuses me is that with Ben Bernanke printing money and continuing with these printing presses for years now, his Fed balance sheet should be at $4 trillion if he continues at this pace by the end of the year. You would anticipate that perhaps this would act to devalue the dollar, but we've seen the dollar index increase 4% so far this year. Some think it's going to be a much more sustainable increase. Why is that? Well, first of all, you have other central banks that are being equally or almost as reckless as ours. Look at what's happening in, in Europe. Look at what's happening in, in, in Great Britain. Look at the Bank of Japan. So when you're talking about the dollar relative to another fiat currency where the central banks are also being reckless, then it's hard to see how much value the dollar is losing. But look at the prices of the things that we have to buy. The Fed claims there's no inflation, but there's plenty of inflation. And if you look at the prices of food and energy, you can see the results. But one thing that's been supporting the dollar is the fact that it's still the reserve currency. So people still buy the dollar when they're worried about other currencies, even though there are greater problems in America than in the countries where people are worrying about the currency. But mm -hmm. at some point, that is going to change. People are going to realize or call the Fed's bluff that our economy is stimulus-based. There is no real exit strategy. Mm -hmm. The Fed is going to print money indefinitely. In fact, right now they're, they're buying $85 billion a month of mortgages right. and treasuries. Pretty soon they're going to have to up the size of that. They're going to be buying more than $100 billion a month. Right. But Peter, the, the dynamic that you just described, isn't that going to continue for the foreseeable future? I mean, look, Bank of Japan is just getting started to, in their massive efforts to devalue the yen. So as long as this all continues, people rush to the U.S. dollar when they want safety in times of crisis, which seem to be plentiful these days, as we've seen with Cyprus this week and any other given day for the last several years. Isn't this going to continue and won't that just continue to benefit the dollar? Now, it won't continue for the foreseeable future. It can continue in the immediate future. But you mentioned Japan. They just came out this week with their eighth consecutive trade deficit. The weak yen is increasing the course, cost of imports in Japan. It's stoking the fires of inflation. So I'm not sure how much more they're going to be able to weaken the yen without creating a real inflation problem in Japan. They might have to start raising interest rates over there a lot sooner than people think. Look, I think the days are numbered for the dollar continuing to benefit from this flight to safety when people figure out that there is no safety. You know, what happened uh, uh, in Cyprus is a bit of a wake-up call. People are starting to realize that just because the government guarantees something doesn't necessarily mean that there's any real protection there. You know, the FDIC has about $25 billion in reserves against 8 to $10 trillion of, insure, of deposits in the United States. That's a drop of the bucket when people start to realize that those, that those protections are no good. 
-hmm. and that when interest rates eventually rise, our whole phony economy topples. Right. They're right. going to realize the box the Fed is in, and they're going to run from the dollar. They'll embrace gold, if anything, but not, not dollars. And, and I hear you entirely, but wasn't it Keynes that it was attributed the quote saying markets can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent? In that regard, psychology plays a role. So many other factors play a role. Would you at least concede, you've been right about a lot of things, but would you concede that dollar bears like yourself have gotten it a little wrong and maybe anticipated that the dollar would really be damaged more than it has been in the last few years? The only way that you can say dollar bears have gotten it wrong maybe is on the timing, but if you look at where the dollar index is, you said it's around 82, that's near its historic lows. You know, as of a few years ago, the lowest the dollar index had ever traded was 80. And the only time it actually went below 80 was in, I think, 2000, believe, right before the financial crisis of 08, and then after it, it got down to the low 70s. But you go back uh, to the year 2000, the dollar index was what, 120? You know, so I've been talking about a weak dollar. The dollar has been weak.